This is a designer's study, and if you get a designer's study, it's either going to be an experiment, an observation, or a correlation. So this is one in case it's an observation. And I don't think we've seen an observation since 2017. And so the 2023 exams coming up, so it could occur. So you'll be given a stimulus. Um, for example, this one says, a primary school noticed it had a problem with bullying behavior in the playground at lunchtime. It asked a psychologist to carry out an observation to investigate the types of antisocial behaviours that were being carried out by school children. Design a study to investigate bullying behaviours of children in a primary school playground. All parents have consented and children are unaware of the study. In your answer, you'll be awarded credit for providing appropriate details of, and then we've got the bullet points. So type of observation with justification, operationalised behavioural categories, use of time and or event sampling with justification, how reliability of data collection could be assessed. And underneath it says justify your choices, or it might say justify your answers, 12 marks. Now those bullet points, um, they could come up or you might get other bullets. You have to be guided by the bullet points because that's where you're gonna get the majority of your marks, which is uh, what I'm just gonna say now, general information. So as I said, you will be awarded most of your marks for the bulleted information. So if it doesn't ask you for a consent form or ethics or anything, don't start rambling on about it. You've got to actually just follow the instructions of what they require. But you will also pick up marks. So when you get a 12 marker, it will be um, marked on a level from one to four. And if you want to get into the top level, level four, which will be 10, 11 or 12 out of 12, it has to be realistic and it has to be able to be implemented. So the examiner would be able to pick it up and think, oh yeah, I, I could replicate that study. One problem most people do is they forget to justify their choices and we'll be looking at that. So I'll show you how to do the whole design study. Um, and you need to mostly write it in continuous prose. Um, and what you, I think what you can do is use the bullets as, subhead, as subheadings. Because if you use the bullets as subheadings, then that kind of gives you a clear indication of what you need to cover. And it shows the examiner that although you're writing in continuous prose, you know exactly which bit you are covering. So it will help them um, mark it more easily. And now marking isn't my favorite thing. And I can imagine examiners are you know, fed up of looking at screens. So the easier you make it, the easier it is for them to award you marks. So quick thing on how to actually start your designer study. Um, what I would do is write a couple of sentences just to set out what you intend to do, because that will help you and the examiner. So you might put in this study, I will observe children for one hour in the playground at lunchtime. I will use CCTV footage to watch and record any bullying behaviours. So keep it simple. Don't say you'll go every day for a week. It gets really it's unnecessary and it gets really complicated. If you are asked to design an observation or study, then generally observations tend to be like an hour or maybe two hours or less. You might be in a laboratory and just be there for like 20 minutes. So make it realistic, keep it simple, um, and just think, what am I being asked to do? All I'm being asked to do is watch children in a playground to see if there's any bullying. So you can do that on one day. You could just go for one lunchtime and do that. OK, so your first bullet I would use as a subheading type of observation with justification. Now, remember that types of observation come in pairs and are the opposites of each other. So you have to decide which ones you're going to use. So is it naturalistic or controlled, overt or covert? And you might want to say whether it's participant or non-participant. Now, I unless it specifies it in the stimulus, I would just stay away from participant and non-participant. Um, I certainly wouldn't go for participant observation. That tends to be for things that are like undercover, like if you're investigating football hooliganism or a cult or something like that. Um, you could just say non-participant because then I can easily record the data. But I wouldn't bother. Um, what I would do for this one is the stimulus really dictates that this is going to be a naturalistic observation and it's going to be covert because if you think about the stimulus it said you're going to go and watch children in a playground with them um, well they're worried about bullying in a playground um so it makes sense to go to the playground to observe the behavior 
So you, would, so you would say it's a naturalistic observation because I'll be watching behaviour in a natural environment, school playground, where people will be going about their daily life. And then you might also kind of justify why you're not choosing a control. So you would say that something like a controlled observation would not be suitable because if we brought students to a laboratory and told them to complete a task to watch for any bullying, then that fake environment and that task, that fake task, and the fact they know they're being watched would prevent them from displaying natural behaviour. So you're saying it's naturalistic, you're saying why it's naturalistic and why it needs to be naturalistic. Um, in the stimulus, it said you're going to view CCTV footage. So that is that indicates it's going to be a covert observation. The children don't know they're being watched. And I think it says that in the stimulus. So you need to say it's covert because I'll be viewing footage through CCTV cameras and they won't know they're being watched. So the examiner knows you know what a covert observation is and then justify it. So this means we will see natural behaviour. If children knew they were being watched, they're not likely to, dis to display bullying behaviour in case they are told off. So you've got your type of observation, you've chosen two, naturalistic and covert. As I said, you, you might want to put like non-participant and just say, because I'm watching CCTV footage. And I think you could justify it very easily by saying, if I was a participant, then the children would wonder who I was in the playground and it'd be very hard to record the behaviour. It just would be so unsuitable. Next bullet point says operationalized behavioral categories. So we use that as a subheading and then say kind of what they are. So I would break down bullying into operationalized behavioral categories and record them in a tally chart. Um, you might want to say why. So behavioral categories allow for objectivity and to show behaviors associated with the bullying that is taking place. So you've shown them that you know what operationalizing is, you're, you're like breaking down bullying into very specific behaviours so you can record them. Now what I would do here is actually draw the chart. So if it asks for behavioural categories, you should really aim to do at least three. If you can do more of that, that's fantastic. But even if you draw the chart and leave some of the behavioural categories um, blank, just to show the examiner that you would have more than three, then that would be good. And then you just put tally on the other side and obviously don't put any tallies in because you haven't done the observation. But you're showing them these are the behavioural categories and this is how I'm going to record the data. It just makes it really clear. The next bullet says use of time and or event sampling with justification. Now, when we're talking about sampling to do with observations, then we're talking about time sampling or event sampling. Don't get confused with sampling in terms of how you get your participants like volunteer opportunity. That is not what this is about. It's saying, how are you going to record your data? So you can, in an observation, you either record it through time sampling or event sampling. And it doesn't really matter which one you choose as long as you give a reason. So you need to put something like to record the data, I would use event sampling or time and then say what that means. So event sampling, this means that I will, will record each behavioural uh, each behavioral category as it occurs during the hour long observation. And then your justification. So for event sampling, this will preserve the integrity of the event. Now, that's quite often on the mark scheme, that phrase there, preserve the integrity of the event. Integrity is about like being honest. So if you record all of the behaviours, then you're giving a more honest account of that um, situation. So this will preserve the integrity of the event because it will record both frequent and infrequent behaviours. And you might want to say it gives a more honest account of what is happening in that hour long observation. OK, last bullet point, it says how reliability of data collection could be assessed. Now, because this is an observation and because there's only two types of reliability named on the spec, which are inter-observer and test-retest, then we have to choose inter-observer. It makes complete sense to do that. Test-retest, by the way, is used for like questionnaires and things. So you would put to assess the reliability of the observation, I will use inter-observer reliability. And then you're justifying why you're doing it. So this will control for observer bias. If there was only one observer, they might miss behaviours or they might be looking for certain behaviours and record them even if they didn't occur. So you're saying why we're doing it. And then there are three steps to inter-observer reliability. So you need to say how to do it. So step one, two or more observers agree behavioural categories. Step two, 
they independently observe the same situation and record their observations in a tally chart. Step three, they compare their results using a Spearman's row test. And if they correlate by 0.8 or more, then it is reliable. And so that's what that's it. That's all you have to do. Um, so what you have to do right now, if you've got time, is do it. So I've just given you the information of how to do it. And now so that's called revision in and putting the knowledge into your head. But now you need to get that knowledge out of your head and onto paper so that if you get an observational design a study in the exam, it will just flow so much more easily. So you might be listening to it going, oh, yeah, I get that. That's really easy. But actually writing it down can be much harder. So if you practice doing it now, it will make it really easy in the exam. So write that design of study for 12 marks and that will uh, hopefully give you some preparation if that question comes up. <laughs>